What's up? I'm Troubleshoot Minecraft 1.21.6 Chase the Skies is out and in this quick video I'll be showing you how to set up your own paper server, install plugins and things like that so you can get playing your own custom server with your friends in no time. Just a quick note before we start this video, this video was sponsored by Apex Hosting. If you're looking for a super easy way to get your own Minecraft server up and running, Apex Hosting is a fantastic choice with super low latency, great customer support, powerful DDoS protection, automated backups and so much more. Head across to the first link down below and check out the latest coupon code in the top right. Currently it's Chase the Skies for 35% off your first invoice. Click Get Started, choose Java, Bedrock or any other game for that matter. Order now and in no time you'll have your own powerful Minecraft server running, ready for you and your friends to join, install plugins and mods on, etc. A huge thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. So without further ado, setting up your paper server. In the description down below, you'll find a link to papermc.io where you can download the paper server. Simply choose paper here and you should see get paper 1.21.6. Currently it's 1.21.4 as paper haven't released an updated build quite just yet. Instead, you'll see toggle experimental builds for 1.21.6. Click this and we can download the latest version here. Simply save the jar file and we'll need to place this in a folder where we'll be hosting our server from. For me, I'll make a new folder on my desktop, right click, new folder called paper 1.21.6. Inside of this folder, I'll go ahead and drop the paper jar that we just downloaded and now we're ready to set up our Minecraft server. First of all, we need a way to start our server. Usually you'd right click new text document, rename it to start.bat or something along those lines and enter some commands. But to make it much simpler, in the description down below, you'll find the text version of this guide on my website. Simply scroll down until you see this section here, create start.bat. Simply choose the download button over here to download a pre-configured text file, start.bat, with all of these commands in it already. Move this file from your downloads into here, and now we should be able to start up our server right after we configure it. Right-click this file, choose edit, and all we need to do here is make sure that the hyphen jar name actually matches the jar file in this folder. You can see it's different. So we'll select the paper jar, hit F2, right click, rename or click twice slowly to get to rename it here. We'll copy the name of the file and we'll paste it in here. Just make sure it ends with dot jar. Then we'll choose how much RAM we want to give our server. By default, the XMX or maximum amount of RAM our server has access to is 2G or 2 gigabytes. To give our server more RAM, hit Control, Shift and Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. Head across to the Performance tab, followed by Memory, and in here you'll see the total amount of RAM in your system, how much is currently in use, and how much is available. All we need to do is make sure that we give our Minecraft server more RAM so it runs better with more plugins, more players, and things like that, but we also need to make sure that we leave RAM available for Windows, our browser, Discord, etc., and the actual Minecraft client if you're planning on playing it on the same computer you're hosting it on. So, for example, if you have 16 gigs of RAM in your system and Windows is currently using 6, that leaves you with 10 gigs of RAM available. If you're going to be playing Minecraft on the same PC, let's say you've limited that to 4 gigs of RAM. That leaves you with 6 gigs available while you're playing the game. Leaving 1 or so for Windows, we now have 5 gigs of RAM left. Inside of this text document, I'll change 2G to be 5G, save this, and we can now close this to launch our server. The first time your server starts, it'll download some files and eventually it'll close. This is normal. So any key to continue. Now we can open eula.txt and inside of this text file, we'll be changing eula false to eula equals true. Save this file and close it. Then in the server.properties file, we can once again open this with notepad or any other text editor and we can change our server's name, change the max number of players, the level seed, etc. Once you're happy with how you've customized your server, double click start.bat to launch your server. If for some reason you see some kind of error about Java in the description down below or from the same text version of this guide, you'll find a link to the Java website. Head across here, simply scroll down 
Under JDK, choose Windows and X64 Installer. Choose the download link, download it, open it, and click through it as you would any other installer to get Java installed. Once you've done so, relaunch your server and it should open up just fine. The first time you launch up your server, you'll see it's recommended to check out this link to learn more about your brand new paper server. I would recommend checking this out at least once. Here, it tells you where to get plugins, optimize your server for security, backups, and things like that. Super useful info. For now though, I'll open up either Fabric without mods or the latest vanilla version and we'll join our server here. To do so, I'll head to multiplayer followed by add a server and we'll add either local host or 127.0.0.1 as our server's address. This is as long as you're playing on the same computer you're hosting the server on. I'll choose done and just like that, we're now able to actually join our server. In the background, you'll see things are happening and there we go, we're now in game. To give ourselves operator or admin, inside of the server console, run op space your username and hit enter. And just like that, we're now an admin on the server. So we can use commands like game mode creative, we can fly around, spawn in items, and things like that. Fantastic. But we installed a paper server, so how exactly do we get to modding? Well, that's pretty simple. In the description down below, you'll find a link to Hangar, which is PaperMC's official modding resource, hangar.papermc.io. Here, you can scroll through the many different plugins, most of which are compatible with the latest version, such as VIA version to allow multiple Minecraft client versions to connect to your server, Geyser MC to allow Bedrock Edition to play on your server, and many useful plugins like that. I'll start off by using a super popular plugin called Essentials. This adds some great commands to our server. Here, I'll simply choose Download External in the top right, and this will take me to the Essentials GitHub. I'll scroll down here and choose to download the latest version all the way at the very bottom. Right now, it's Essentials X 2.21.1. Fantastic. Just a quick note, not every website you download from will be GitHub. It may be slightly different. At least with GitHub, you scroll to the bottom and choose your file there. Once it's done, we'll need to place it into our paper server folder inside of the plugins folder here. So I'll drag it from my downloads into here. And just like that, we've now installed the essentials mod. From here, we either save our server using the command save hyphen all and the command stop to gently bring our server to a close or because this is paper, we can use the command reload and reload confirm to reload all of the plugins on our server. Usually though, this isn't the best idea as things can go wrong. As you see here, it's best to save all and stop to gently bring our server to a close and restart it fully to make sure things are happy. To actually configure your plugins, you can head back to the plugins folder and in here, each plugin should make its own folder where inside of it, you'll find config, items, everything to do with a plugin in here. Let's go ahead and see if this plugin works. Back in our Minecraft client, I'll rejoin our server and you can already see text in the bottom left confirming that it's working. Mail is working and it's announcing that we set fly to true. Let's test out something a bit more interesting. If I use the command slash set home, if I could spell and fly away to somewhere else, we can use the command slash home to teleport us straight back to where we were when we originally set it. Fantastic. Everything working as expected. So let's open this up and start playing with our friends. But there's two major things we need to do first. First of all, the Windows firewall and second of all, port forwarding. Let's start off with the Windows firewall. Heading back to the text version of this guide one more time, scrolling all the way down, you'll eventually see a colorful section that looks like this. This is a PowerShell command that opens the port 25565 for both TCP and UDP, allowing people on our local network and eventually over the internet to connect and play on our brand new Minecraft paper server. Choose the copy button in the top right, then hit start and type in PowerShell, where we'll right click and run PowerShell shell as admin. Inside of this new window, right click to paste and then hit enter a few times to make sure that everything runs properly. And just like that, we've successfully opened the Minecraft server port to the local network and eventually to the internet where we get to port forwarding. For now, at least someone sitting next to us on the same network connection should be able to connect to our Minecraft server. 
To do so, use the command ipconfig, one word, hit enter, and then look for the way that you're connected to the internet. In my case, it's Ethernet. The IPv4 address, in my case, 192.168.1.51, is the address someone sitting next to me connected to the same router would use to connect to our Minecraft server. For people over the internet, we'll need to do something a bit more. Port forwarding is the most robust and well-used method. It may sound intimidating, but it's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is open up our router's admin panel and port forward to this address over here, IPv4, followed by your local IP address. To get to your router's admin panel, usually you'll look at the default gateway here, and in my case, it's 192.168.1.1. We'll open this page in a browser. Now, obviously, as routers are so different from brand to brand, I've had to make a simple breakdown example that explains roughly what you need to do. Basically, head to the port forwarding, application forwarding, or game forwarding section of your router's admin panel after logging in, and in here, in some way or another, you'll be asked for a port number, usually external and internal, a protocol, and an IP address. For the external port, I'll enter 25565, and as I'm required to enter a range, I'll have to enter it twice. Then I'll do the same number for internal, and for protocol, we'll select TCP and UDP. If you can't select both of them, enter it once for TCP and again for UDP. Then for the local IP, we'll type in the same number we saw earlier. So IP config and my local IPv4 address was 182.168.1.51. As I'm only required to type in the last few digits, I'll do that here and then I'll choose add new. Just like that, we've now port forwarded a Minecraft server and people over the internet should be able to join it. Just Google what is my IP and that IP address that you're shown there should be used for other people to connect to your server. Just like that, you can now enjoy your brand new paper server with your friends. Just a quick note, if you're struggling with getting port forwarding to work properly, port forwarding may be blocked by default by your ISP, and a simple phone call can usually get things handled for free. And that's really that. So, hopefully you found this video really useful. Again, if you're wishing to skip all the hassle, you can check out Apex Hosting for a much easier server setup. Thanks again to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.